Okay, since yesterday when we goofed up on the speed of the camera, apologize for that. Uh, I'm going to go over all the colors again for, for you so you see what's going on. So, on his hat. Okay, like I mentioned, we used mudstone. Hold that up there for a minute. Mudstone. Put on almost straight. I mean, my brush was wet. The wood was wet. You can still see the wood coming back through. Okay, this is mudstone. Great color. All right. For the headband, I used my favorite brown, Asphaltum. Okay, it's a, it's a crazy name for brown. You'd think it would, you'd pave streets with it, but it's not that color. It's just a real rich brown. Alrighty. And then I dry brushed it with uh, this color. This is called parchment. It's a, it's a white, but it's got a tint of a real light tint, sort of a cream color. You can see the difference. Not much in my white, but I mean you can tell the difference. There's a good bit of difference, but this is a nice color. White is really a harsh color. So you have to be careful with a white, straight white. Parchment. Okay, this is parchment. Down here and here. And then, as I had some asphaltum on my glass here, from painting the hat band, when I painted the shoulders, I mixed in some asphaltum with my parchment and in real light you can see where I shaded the uh, creases, wrinkles in his shirt with that. Everything was still wet now, nothing's dry. Over here also. What? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I haven't finished the hat yet. All right. Cowboys work outside in the summer and it gets hot. So their hats are sweaty. Or their heads are sweaty. And that soaks through their hats over time. So uh, this is a light wash of dark burn umber. Dark burn umber. You can find it in the store, but I had an empty, I had a extra bottle of burn umber that was almost empty, so I just mixed some black with it and got down to where it's really a dark burn umber, nice, real rich uh, brown, dark but still real, real rich. And you can see on the hat that I washed it out pretty good. Now if we turn it over, I used this same burn umber, painted dark around the inside rim of where we fitted, fit his head. And then kind of washed it out on the outside to show where the cowboy's sweat again bleached out. And that kind of softens the joint of where these two pieces meet together. So it looks, it looks natural. Okay? Alrighty. On the cigarette I just did white. Now you could use white here because the paper is white and I wanted to, wanted to stand out different from this white here. And then painted black on the end and then just kind of uh, lightly touched it with white here on the end to indicate ash. Okay, now I think also in that video I set out all my browns. Okay, we have asphaltum here. That's that real rich brown color. Here we have regular burn umber, 
here I'll show you the difference between the two. You can see one's still brown but it's considerably darker than that just by mixing some black in with it. Other browns that you use, I use a lot, and I actually use just a little bit of this color here. This is raw sienna. You can see it real lightly here on his hat right there. See how it's, that's this color right here. Put on with a dry brush, just by real lightly going over it. See there's some more of it up here. It's just a highlight that makes things look nice. And another color, which I haven't used anywhere on this, is Burnt Sienna. Actually, that one would go there. With these colors, browns here, you can, you can pretty well hit any brown you want. And then after that, you can, you know, start adding your lighter colors. Now, if you, want, if you enjoy mixing paint, which I don't, I don't mind mixing paints together to reach different colors. Uh, you could probably do away with three quarters of what you see around here, probably even more than that, just by uh, uh, mixing your own colors. And even the, a lot of these here you could do away with, because if you took basic red and green, you're going to end up with brown. I'll show you. That's a brand new one. I'll use a different one here. Red's a strong color. There you go, there's brown. Nice color. And then by varying the amount on these two two different colors, you know, you can make it you can make it a reddish brown. You can make it a you can probably bring it up to about there. I don't think you could get it any farther than that. But that's where brown comes from. Red and green. Okay. On his shirt, moving right along here. This is asphaltum. This is uh, raw sienna I did for the trim. And like I say, that was parchment. That was a little mix of uh, asphaltum and parchment for a highlight. I dry brushed or this is neon blue, that's this color right here. That's really a bright blue, but it's pretty pretty blue. You couldn't mix that one, you'd have to go buy that one. <laughs> After I double coated it, I put two coats on there because I wanted to, uh, this is sort of sim kind of transparent, so to get it solid, it took two coats to really get a nice finish on there. And after that, I took a little bit of midnight blue, not very much, and then uh, colored the creases, folds, with that midnight blue, just to add some depth to it. And then again, using my dry brush and a little bit of the uh, parchment paint there, I hit it, hit the whole thing actually, real lightly, a little heavier up here, but real lightly in these areas around here with the dry brush. And let's see, there was one other thing. Oh yeah, around where he keeps his watch, I just kind of real lightly put some uh, parchment on there. Not very much, just to indicate there's wear there from that watch being in his pocket. 
Okay. Let's see what else. I think that's just about it. And again, that was our big boob on the speed of that camera. So hopefully we're we're not going to do that again. I, if I want to use fast motion, I'll do it when I run my uh, processing program up on the computer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue everything together and then I'm going to varnish it because it's finished. Now when I varnish it, all these colors are going to come alive again. They're flat now because they're, uh, they're, on, they're dry and they're on a uh, dry piece of wood. So let's go over to the other area and we'll glue this thing together. Okie doke. First off, I glued his uh, cigarette in place with a couple drops of super glue. Okay? Now I'm just going to separate everything. I'm gluing it all together, but I'm not going to glue it to the base yet because I still have to varnish it. Alright? So, first off, I'm going to leave this on the base. <laughs> Right now, but I'm not going to glue the base. I've squeezed me out some uh, some of that thick epoxy. I can show you where to get that in the other uh, one of the past videos. I got a comment this morning about someone wanting to know how a character develops. Well, if you go to my blog, I have two blogs now, a new one and an old one. The new one is on the Out West Gallery website. That's outwestgallery.com. And then just look for blog. And there's a, a couple posts there already about a sketch I did of an Indian and uh, how it turned out in wood. Now, that's where I'm going to be posting all my commentary on the work that I do. It's not going to be on YouTube. And it's not going to be on my old blog. It's going to be on my new blog. So when I post a picture of a finished carving or something I'm working on that's not going to be in a video, it's going to be on that new blog at outwestgallery.com. Now on the old blog, there's about eight or nine years worth of material on there. And that's at outwestwoodcarving.blogspot.com. Calm. There's tons of stuff on there. So if you want to find out how I uh, did a lot of my work, you can go to that old place and learn a lot from it. Okay? So get me some epoxy here. Run that around down in there. You got, a, you got some play time with this stuff. Not very much, but uh, this is five minute epoxy. So you don't really have, to, you can work, work things around a little bit before it gets set up to where you can't. I'm putting it on my hat here. I just want to get it in the center because I don't want to have any squeeze out on the edges. I just want enough. It's going to hold. This stuff is strong. So I'm not worried about it. That's probably plenty. Okay. Now I'm going to tip it forward about like that. Put something underneath it here. And 
and just let her sit there for a little bit till it firms up. Okay? And then we'll come back and go to the next step. Okay, I'm over here at my workbench. We're going to uh, varnish this thing. Now, I use Minwax Polyurethane Clear Satin Varnish. And I buy the small little, little can because uh, before I use this can up, it's going to get hard. I'm going to have to end up probably throwing away about that much of it. So uh, don't go down and buy the big old pint because it's just, just a waste of money. Okay, okay. To use it, I go down to, to brush it on, I go down to Walmart and I buy me some of these cheap little brushes. They cost about a buck, maybe buck twenty-five, buck fifty. I use them about, uh, oh, three or four times. Give them a good workout before I do anything with them to pull out any loose, loose hairs. And these are pig bristles. <coughs> Excuse me, which is good because a natural bristle holds holds more uh, fluid than a one of these plastic ones. And I really lay it on thick, especially up in the head area, because where there's no not much paint, these are just real thin washes. It'll really soak it up. And that works to your benefit in a couple ways. It, it actually strengthens your carving because it soaks into the wood and dries. And as you see when I'm putting it on here, it's changing the color of the wood. It's going back to the way it looked like when it was wet. And it'll stay that way. And I'll put it on up here as long as it soaks it up. Really soak it up down in the bottom there. Out here where we put more paint on it, it isn't going to soak it up much at all. So we don't have to put so much on it. There you can see the difference in the two colors. See there, look at the face now. See, it's totally soaked in up there. I can actually brush on some more. Not going to hurt anything. People use bo boiled linseed oil for their carvings. I have just, you know, that might have been fine back in the old days, but it's not anymore. I mean, people put that stuff on there and 
it's just just gross. Turns to turns to jelly and starts looking chalky and the dirt magnet. And this stuff I've been varnishing my carvings for over close to 45 years with this polyurethane set and finish and every once in a while I'll get come across one that needs a little repair or something like that and the finish on it is just as good as the day that I put it on there. Plus this stuff isn't dangerous like that boiled linseed oil is. I mean that stuff will burn your shop down if you're not careful. Why mess with it? I just don't understand why people still use it. It's beyond me. Now you notice up here on the top on his hat how it's not soaking in. That's because we put so much paint up there, but yet on the face it's again soaked all that other stuff in there. Now this is this is how much look at the difference in color. Hopefully you can see that. That's what the nice varnish does to your carving. And again you can see how much it soaks up. Don't be timid putting this stuff on here. And don't be worried about getting runs and drips and stuff because I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Just the varnish, like I say, after you open the can, it'll start getting thick over time. And when it really gets thick, just toss the can. You don't want to use it anymore. That's why I say always get the smallest can you can. And don't use spray. Don't spray your carvings with a varnish. Because when you spray it like this, it's not going to get into all the spray. It's not going to be even into the areas. Like if you spray it like this here, it's going to be light here on the edge of his nose. Might not even get any spray. You're going to have to turn it and spray it this way. And when you do that, it's going to build up here on his nose. The only way you can get an even coat of varnish on a carving is to use a brush. Not a spray can. And you won't get this kind of this nice finish from a spray. You just won't. Okay, I think we got everything. Looks good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my wood clamp <laughs> Here, hold this for a second Okay, after I rinse my brush out with mineral spirits, that's what it takes to clean the varnish out of your brush, I take my brush spinner, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with this, this costs, well it might cost between 15 and 20 bucks, but believe me if you do a lot of painting and stuff like I do, 
it more than pays for itself. You just take your brush, you stick it down in here like that after you've uh, got it clean, and then you do that. And what that does is it gets rid of almost every bit of that uh, paint thinner, especially from down here in the ferrule area where. Uh, you know those brushes, they get harder than hell down in there, but this keeps that soft. And it keeps your brush in good condition, and, and you can use your brush three or four times as long as you normally would, because that thing gets it, gets it clean. So I'll just lay that over there for the next time. Now, like I said before, never use a rag to wipe or clean your carbon. Use a paper towel. So all these shiny areas now, let me take this out of here. What I'm going to do with the shining areas is just lightly wipe them off. And that will get rid of any excess varnish. Most of the varnish that you need is already soaked into the wood. And this uh, paper towel, unless you rub real hard, won't leave any kind of residue on your carving. Actually, if you get in there and bulk out on cleaning it, it's going to defeat the purpose. And what shiny areas there are, like up here where I really laid the paint on, uh, once the varnish is dry, uh, there's one more step you can take to get rid of that. Right now he's looking pretty good. Everything had, heads on solid. So I'll let this dry overnight and then we'll come back and uh, do the next step. they will come out. Looks good. Turned out really nice. Okay? So, till next time, I'll talk to you later.